Welcome to Grow and Give, a modern victory garden project from Colorado State University Extension. We're here to help you learn to grow food for yourself, your family, your neighbors, and your community. Share the harvest, keep it local. Pests in the vegetable garden. Squash bugs. Squash bugs can be a persistent problem in gardens and can cause quite a bit of damage to our cucurbits, such as melons, cucumbers, pumpkins, winter squash, and summer squash. They tend to feed on all parts of the plant. As you can see here, these squash bugs are really going after the pumpkin fruit on the vine. Squash bugs are true bugs which means that they have a piercing sucking mouth part. They have a shield shaped body and are somewhat flattened, but they're very active and move around. As a piercing sucking insect, they have a straw like mouth part and they use this to impale leaves, stem, or even fruit tissue and draw the sap from the plant. This causes a bit of wilting of the plant itself and this kind of wilting can be uh, told apart from the normal kind of droop that the plant will have in the high heat of summer because it doesn't recover in the cooler evenings or in the early mornings. If the plant is drooping and not coming out of it, you need to look closer to see what the cause could be. It could be a disease or it could be an insect like this, the squash bug. Adults will overwinter in garden debris, which is one reason why it's super important for us to clean the gardens well, especially if we have pest pressure. But the unfortunate reality of a squash bug is they'll use any kind of cover in the landscape to overwinter. And we have had reports of them taking advantage of the dry riverbeds that are built from small and medium sized rocks as a design element that come through people's landscapes. So if you have squash bug pressure, it's best to be prepared and understand what their life cycle is in order to try and use it against them. They'll become active uh, with egg laying and mating in June. So in June is when gardeners need to start scouting their plants to try and find the eggs that you see here. The eggs are deposited in clusters and they're kind of a bronze shape. They're very obvious and they'll be on the underside of leaves. So start scouting in June to find the eggs. The squash bug is not picky about what type of cucurbit plant it goes after, but it does seem to prefer some of the summer squashes. So you can start looking there, but don't leave the winter squashes or some of the melons and cucumbers off your list to check because these bugs will take advantage of anything. There will be several generations per year Two is typical. How do you control squash bugs? That's a great question. It can be a challenge. And the secret is to start early. Again, with the scouting early in June, you wanna look for the eggs, but also the nymphs on the underside of the leaves. The nymphs are gonna be a non-flying bug, like you see here in the photograph, and they can have a different color range from that kind of a pale green that you see at the top of the photograph here, or that powder blue body that you see towards the base of the photo at the right. Don't mulch. That's a really hard bit of advice to give Colorado gardeners because we want to conserve water and keep the roots of our plants cool. But one of the behavioral characteristics of a squash bug is that they crawl down the plant to hide at the base in any kind of debris, such as lowered leaves or mulch. So if you have a garden that is persistently um, under attack by squash bugs every year, don't mulch. But instead, what you can do is use this behavior of the insect in order to uh, put out traps to attract them. These traps are gonna be made from either just a, a board or a newspaper that has been laid down and they can tuck underneath thinking that they're hiding. What you do as a gardener is you go out there with a shop vac or other powerful vacuum and lift the board up and vacuum the insects up. Make sure you have a plan for disposing of the insects out of the vacuum itself because they will be alive in there. 
but uh, vacuuming them up on a routine basis. For example, every single morning, you could go out there and vacuum them up. Plus scouting for and crushing the eggs or nymphs can go a long way to try and prevent problems from this pest blowing up out of control. But if you'd like to try something else, you could sprinkle diatomaceous earth around the base of the plant. That can be very, very helpful. It is an irritant and it could drive them off. Alternately, you could try sprays of pyrethrins right at egg laying. And that's only about a two week window that you can do this right at egg laying or just immediately after hatch. That's a little bit harder for us to um, capture, uh, to catch the insect infestation in that time frame. So some of these other techniques might be a better choice for you. Learn more, grow more. Contact your local CSU Extension office.